guys, how's it going? Tess back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One, and we start this one with a rather weird email. Oscar's come to me and says, I enjoy playing for the club here, boss, but I just miss home and my family so much, you know. I still give 110% every week, but I just thought you should know that I'm not feeling as settled right now. I haven't spoken to anyone about it, not even my agent, but it's not easy being in a strange country, etc., as the, uh, the clip ran out of time. But it's really, really weird that Oscar would come to me with an email like that when he's been at the club for three years. Really don't understand why that sort of email is coming through from him right now. Perhaps it's just something that uh, the EA like to throw at you in manager mode. But you'd have thought after three years in the country with a lot of Brazilian teammates around him, or at least Portuguese-speaking teammates around him, then uh, you know he would have been quite easily or quite happily settled at the club. But nonetheless, let's push on into this Newcastle game. I'm going to try and monitor that Oscar situation, make sure it doesn't get out of hand, because he's a player that I definitely do not want to lose. But Musa Sissoko has a great effort there. Close to uh, to taking the lead for for uh, for Newcastle. They're obviously the uh, the team that ended our unbeaten run last year. If you remember, we started the season very very well indeed uh, last season, and uh, we actually were unbeaten for at least 16 games, I think, in the Premier League before we finally met defeat against Newcastle away from home. And how has Torres not scored? I don't know. He's just easily through one on one, smashes it with the outside of his foot over the bar, and we go in at half time nil nil. I was uh, not happy to say the least with Fernando Torres right there, but we came into the second half. First thing I did was make a mistake and they punished me for it. If uh, if Torres made too good a connection on that earlier shot, Gutierrez made a horrible connection on that one, absolutely scuffed it, and it was the fact that the shot was hit so poorly that was the reason that it was able to beat Petek into the bottom corner. You'll see the way he hits the ball from the replay. Just kicks it into the ground. There's no pace on it whatsoever, but it takes it away from the goalkeeper. We find ourselves 1-0 down, and they're actually going to come close to making it two here. It's uh, Johan Gufran this time. Another, um, another scuffed shot. Fortunately, this time it does go off off target and not into the back of the net but uh, I'm not really too sure why David Luiz fell over there but we're actually going to uh, we're going to try and get ourselves back into it we've not got too long left to do it here 10 minutes left Fernando Torres links up well with uh, Muriel who's actually just come on and uh, oh, Tim Krull man Tim Krull is such a good goalkeeper he thwarts me time and time again did it all a game long at last season in this uh, corresponding fit and Gufran again is going to get into the box fortunately David Luiz this time is able to do enough to force him wide and make sure that he can't get a shot on target but we're into second half stoppage time it's do or die Torres plays it into Muriel they play the 1-2 they play the 1-2-3 Torres back to Muriel sorts his feet out we're back on level terms with the last kick of the game absolutely honestly we kicked off again referee blew for the final whistle absolutely immediately and the way that Luis Muriel sorts his feet out here is absolutely superb he goes with his left foot, fakes, lets it run across him and then gets his right foot out from underneath his uh, out from underneath his left foot and gets his foot around it to finish it into the bottom corner away from the goalkeeper. Luis Muriel has done more in the opening month and a half of this new season than uh, Diego Costa did for the entire 12 months of the previous year. I could not more could not be more happy with the way that he has come into the club and the impact he is having and he saves our unbeaten record in this season so far cannot thank him enough. We had Courtois to thank in yesterday's episode, saving a penalty away at Tottenham, and this time it's Luis Muriel to thank for uh, for scoring in the last dying seconds against uh, Newcastle. So we come in away from West Ham in snowy conditions. It's really not going to be the easiest of games, to, uh, to say the least, especially considering uh, the sort of football you have to play in the snow isn't necessarily suitable to uh, the style of play that I prefer because uh, just it's horrible first touches are awful and I like to play the little small tick attack of passes don't I and it's just doesn't suit that very well whatsoever but Torres had a horrible effort in the first game of the episode and Lukaku did exactly the same here honestly I cannot you cannot underestimate how much I am hating absolutely hating playing with Romelu Lukaku right now in this Chelsea career mode if he doesn't improve in the next week or so in January he's gone He's, he's just gone. I just don't like playing with him. He's not doing anything for me. And I want him out of the club and I want a replacement. So uh, that is the situation with Romelu Lukaku right now. And they came close here through Joe Cole later on in the uh, in the second half on the uh, just after the hour mark. But I made a couple of changes trying to win the game in the last 10 minutes. Grab a goal like we could at the end of the last one. Marco Royce and Luis Muriel coming on. So a wealth of talent coming off the bench. But it was West Ham that were going to go in front. And they were going to go in front in the most retarded of situations. I'm speechless. Honestly, I'm just absolutely speechless. Thibaut Courtois, the fuck are you doing? He's just stood there and watched the ball roll past his feet into the back of the net. You'll see it again from the replay if you missed it first time. I, 
there just aren't any words for how retarded this is. I don't know whether it's Thibaut Courtois. I don't know whether it's just the game engine. But what is that? It's right next to his foot. And he's just turned around and walked... Just turned around, looked at it, and then just walked back towards the net as it goes in. And then acted like, oh no, they've scored a goal. Of course they've scored a goal. He just wants to go past your foot, you complete plank. I was so angry at uh, the fact that that goal had gone in. And the fact that afterwards we got this email from the board. After yesterday's disappointing result, the board feel it is important to encourage you to experiment with the team dynamics and find a way to improve our outcome in the next match. It's the first game we've lost all season. All season long. The first game we've lost. And then they come up with a message like that because Thibaut Courtois is an absolute idiot. It's not my fault. And you can tell from how angry I am in this commentary how angry I was at the time. And the fact that I decided, no, bollocks to it. I'm not going to record a third match. I am done. I am absolutely done with Thibaut Courtois right now. I don't want to play any more career mode. So I stopped recording. I did a uh, squad report for you at the end of this one because uh, I know a few of you have been asking in the past couple of episodes for a squad report. So uh, I threw this in there just to make sure that the you know the video wasn't too short, etc. And uh, if you want to pause it at any point, by the way, to uh, to check any individual player stats and have a quick look at uh, some more in-depth analysis of each individual player, then uh, feel free to pause the uh, the video at any particular point. But uh, a few players are doing very, very well. They're progressing quite nicely. Eden Hazard, valued at £26.5 million there, or 28 I can't remember. I flashed off the screen. I looked away. Anyway, we've got a few players that are progressing very, very nice. I am all over the place in this commentary. You can tell, can't you? I'm just so, so ridiculously angry at about Courtois right now, even just watching it back. The fact that I recorded it five days ago and I'm still seething over it kind of uh, overemphasizes the fact that he's just a complete fucking retard. But anyway, that's going to bring this episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll, uh, I'll let the squad report play out. We won't have an end slate on this one. So if you feel if you, you want to subscribe to the channel, even if uh, you don't mind me raising like this every now and again, there will be an annotation in the top right hand corner of your screen to do so and a link in the description as well. If uh, you missed the previous episode, which came out yesterday, there'll be an annotation in the bottom left hand side of your uh, of your picture. But of course, feel free to check the channel page as well. And uh, that's going to wrap it up. If you want to follow me on Twitter as well, at Chisnoid Gaming, then feel free to do that as well. There'll be a link in the description for just that purpose. But that's going to bring this one to a close. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Oh, Thibaut Courtois, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? I'll see you next time.